Welcome to the Joy of Music. My name is Diane Bish, and I would like to invite you to join us today as we bring you a special program entitled Great Hymns of Praise and Worship with my special guest, Elizabeth Elliott. As author, lecturer, and radio host of her program, Gateway to Joy, Elizabeth Elliott is one of the outstanding women in Christianity today. We're going to be talking about a subject dear to her heart, and that is Great Hymns of Faith. Thank you for joining us. It is a very great pleasure for me today to welcome Elizabeth Elliott to the Joy of Music. She has been such an inspiration to thousands, even millions over the years, and certainly an inspiration to me. And in her books, and her writings, and her speaking, and in her radio program, Gateway to Joy, she has been a Christian influence in the lives of so many, and we want to welcome you to the Joy of Music today. Thank you, Diane. This is a totally different experience for me. You know, just recently, I have been listening to your tapes on great hymns of the faith and how they have influenced you and what they have meant to you. And so I thought today on the program that it would be wonderful to hear you speak about the hymns where people can watch you and see you speaking about them that you have loved so much and that have meant uh, so much to all of us. And I think one of the first questions I'd like to ask you is how you came to love hymns. Well, there's no question at all that it was because of the influence of my parents. I come from a family of six. I'm number two of six. And I think every one of us was tucked into bed at night by either our father or our mother. And one of the little hymns that we learned very early was Jesus, tender shepherd, hear me. Bless thy little lamb tonight. Through the darkness, be thou near me, keep me safe to a morning light. All this day thy hand hath led me, and I thank thee for thy care. Thou hast warmed me, clothed me, fed me. Listen to my evening prayer. And it was such a comfort to just be able to snuggle down under the covers and know that we could have that little hymn just going over and over in our minds. And every morning, after breakfast, we were herded into the living room. And breakfast, of course, had to be right on the dot of 7 o'clock. And when my father said 7 o'clock, he really meant 6.59. And following the singing of one hymn, and we always sang all the stanzas, we didn't skip stanzas, then my father read the Bible. I want to assure any families that may be listening who think, well, how in the world do you ever get six kids to sing hymns and to sit still while you read the Bible? And I said, well, I haven't even finished telling you yet. When the Bible was read, then we had to get down on our knees. And my father and was prayed. was this before school every day? Every morning. And my father had to make a train. So there was absolutely no flexibility at breakfast. We knew that that train was going to leave when it was going to leave. So all of this was before we went to school before my father had to leave for work. And he would read the Bible. But I do want to encourage young parents to realize that although your children may appear to be paying no attention whatsoever, it is amazing how much gets through just by osmosis. Mm -hmm. And I can look back and, and realize how many scripture verses that I learned, not because I tried to memorize them, but because they were the same every single day we heard them. Mm -hmm. And our father prayed for each of us by name 
And if there was anything particular that any of us might be struggling with, our teachers or our schoolwork or whatever, uh, he would pray about those. And then he would always end with the Lord's Prayer. And so all of us would join in the Lord's Prayer. And that was a routine that, for which there was practically no variance, no matter what was happening. Even on Christmas morning, we were allowed to open our stockings, but before we could look at the things under the tree, we had family prayers. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but His smile quickly drives it away. For the favor He shows and the joy He bestows are for them who will trust and obey. I think my favorite hymn from the time I can remember was Beneath the Cross of Jesus. And I have always been drawn very strongly to the cross and to all the hymns that mention the cross. And Elizabeth Clefane was the woman who wrote that hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, I fain would take my stand, the shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land, a home within the wilderness, a rest upon the way from the burning of the noontide heat and the burden of the day. I take, O cross, thy shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face, content to let the world go by, to know no gain or loss, my sinful self, my only shame, my glory, all the cross. And there's a stanza which is very often omitted from modern hymn books, 
which I love, O oh, safe and happy shelter, O oh, refuge tried and sweet, O oh, trysting place where heaven's love and heaven's justice meet. As to the holy patriarch, and I'm sure that Elizabeth Clefay must have been referring to uh, Jacob, as to the holy patriarch, a wondrous dream was given. So seems my Savior's cross to me, a ladder up to heaven. My husband and I go to bed early, and we get up early, long before it's light. And I love this hymn, When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries, may Jesus Christ be praised. Alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair, may Jesus Christ be praised. Does sadness fill my mind? A solace here I find, may Jesus Christ be praised. Or fades my earthly bliss? The loveliest strain is this, may Jesus Christ be praised. Be this while life is mine, my canticle divine, may Jesus Christ be praised. As you can very well see, and I think I already mentioned, I am an old woman. In fact, I have passed the biblical quotient of 70 years, and the more I think about what heaven is going to be like and what my life has been, for which I do thank God, I just want my whole soul to be praise to Jesus Christ. So this last stanza, be this while life is mine, my canticle divine, canticle is a song, may Jesus Christ be praised. Be this the eternal song through all the ages long, may Jesus Christ be praised. And very likely we're going to be singing this hymn in heaven.
You know, the Bible tells us to sing and make music in our hearts to the Lord. Do you believe it's important to, to sing uh, to the Lord? I mean, when you're in a car driving or when you're at home? Or Absolutely. And I'll tell you, I think the main reason we need to sing a lot is because the devil hates it. I think he absolutely deplores hearing Christians sing. And when we are at the very worst times in our lives, at the very end of our rope, we think, oh, this time, you know, everything, everything's just going to fall apart. I don't know what to do. Try singing. We just came from a visit with some dear friends of ours who live in Morristown, New Jersey. And every morning, we've stayed in their home a number of times, the first thing we hear is the two of them singing absolutely beautifully while they're getting dressed. She comes down to fix breakfast, she's still singing. He comes down, he's singing. They sit down at the table, we all hold hands and we sing. And they have some horrible stories in their background. And they have just said, we just know that we have to keep on singing in order to be sure that we keep that devil away. And it just inspires me every time I go there. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed redeemer. For our sins, he suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, the crucified. George Matheson wrote several beautiful hymns. I don't know if he wrote a great many, but my favorite that he wrote is called, O Love That Will Not Let Me Go. And I'm not sure that this story is true. Uh, some have said that the reason he wrote this was because he was jilted by his fiance when he himself became blind. And so he wrote this beautiful, him, O love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul on thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. O light that followest all my way, I yield my flickering torch to thee. My heart restores its borrowed ray that in thine sunshine's blaze its day may brighter, fairer be. O oh, joy that seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow in the rain and feel the promise is not vain that morn shall tearless be. And then it goes from love and light and joy to stanza four. O oh, cross that liftest up my head, I dare not ask to fly from thee. I lay in dust life's glory, dead, and from the ground there blossoms red life that shall endless be. I read an article that you wrote not long ago where you were speaking about 
the hymn, How Firm a Foundation, and what it had meant to you at a very uh, serious time in your life. Would you like to talk about that? How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your face in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Back in 1956, when my first husband, Jim Elliott, was killed along with four other American missionaries in the jungles of eastern Ecuador, we did not know for almost five days whether the men were dead or alive. We just knew that we had lost radio contact and it took a group of missionaries and Ecuadorian soldiers and Quechua Indians almost five days on foot to reach where these five men had set up their camp with a small airplane. And so during those agonizing four or five nights as I lay in bed, I would think about the, these wonderful hymns What do you think is the difference between a praise song and a, and a great hymn of faith? Do you think it's theology, learning the attributes of God? We learned theology through the great hymns. I would say that that is the most important source of the, theologically that, the theology that I have in my head. Mm -hmm. um, very likely some of my brothers, I have four brothers and one sister, and maybe I'm sure that several of them have been more, much more theologians than I have, but I do have a, a vast store of theology because of having to learn those hymns, which of course we had no idea we were learning. It's just that they, they stuck and we sang them again and again. Could you talk to us a little bit about one of my favorite hymns? And I, I think it's probably one of yours too. 
And that is, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Thank you for joining us today on The Joy of Music as we have brought you a special program entitled Great Hymns of Praise and Worship with my special guest, Elizabeth Elliot. We pray that you have been blessed and enriched by the music and words today and we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music.